Hello and welcome to the Inspiring Inkin YouTube channel. I'm Amanda Fowler. In today's video, we are going to be making a fun fold card. This is um, a card designed by the lovely Sue, who sent this to me at Christmas. Now, I keep all the cards that you send me, and, and then I make videos <laughs> with them. So this is the card that Sue sent me. It folds flat to go in the post, and it will fit in a standard, standard size envelope. So it's really cool. It's really straightforward to make. Um, and what I'll do is I will tell you the measurements as we go. But if you scroll down there, you'll find a clickable link and that will take you directly to the blog post that is on my blog, which is www.inspiringinkin.com. But the, the link in YouTube below is, is direct. So it's got extra characters after that. And that will give you all the measurements. So if you don't catch them when, <laughs> when I'm saying them, then please um, go there and check that out. So I'm going to turn the camera around and get started. Now, the card itself is just a plain piece of card with a few cute pieces of scoring and um, layers. So let's pull my Knight of Navy card and my trimmer and my trusty post-it notes with the measurements on. So you are going to need a piece of card that is eight inches by six inches. And that is all you're actually going to need because it, it basically the card is is a fold flat so with the eight inch at the top you want to score at two inches and six now let me just show you so you've got those two pieces scored there now we're going to cut and we're only cutting between the two score lines. So you can see here, we've got these two score lines and we're actually doing these cut pieces first and then we'll do the middle scores. So the cutting is at one and a quarter inches and you are going to cut between that two inch score line and the six inch score line. And then turn it around and do exactly the same. So line it up at one and a quarter inches. Move your trimmer along and cut between two inches and six inches. Now, I just want to show you a bit of an adaption I have made to my trimmer blade. Um, I have added a piece of white cardstock here. And I've actually stuck it to the back of the trimmer. And the reason for that is I often work with dark card. And I was finding that I couldn't always see these measurements because it was like dark on dark, it was quite difficult to see. So I used a piece of double-sided tape and a piece of cardstock, and I've added that in. And it's just, it has really made lining things up much easier. So hopefully that'll help. So now we've got those two cut pieces. So now we're going to score this little top section and the bottom section first at four inches. Make sure to move your um, cutting blade out of the way. So you've just got score lines there on those two pieces. There's no scoring here at the moment. So that's those two. 
And now we're going to score here and score three and at five inches. So this time we're only scoring in that middle section. So at three and at five. And that is all the cutting and scoring of the card blank. So let me show you now. So you've got these two pieces that we've just done. So that kind of gives you like a bay window effect. And then you've got these two pieces, top and bottom. Now you can have them going either way. They can go top and bottom, left and right. It's up to you. But what I suggest you do, ooh, what I suggest you do is get your bone folder out and fold every single score line both ways or reinforce every single score line both ways. It just makes the, the folds crisper, but also it helps the cards oh the cards stand up nice and straight but equally um means that it'll lie flat in the envelope as well so there we go so there is let me see hopefully you can see that better there is basically the card shape itself Okay, so now we've got lots of paper panels to add. So I've used the Take to the Sky um, patterned paper and I just brought in the, the backing. So in all of our patterned paper, you get the, a, a backing sheet. And on this backing sheet, it tells you what the patterned paper name is, but it also tells you the colours that are included in that. So in this one, you've got Boho Blue, Copper Clay, Mossy Meadow, Knight of Navy, and Smoky Slate. So it just means it's easy for you to pick up which colors are going to coordinate with that paper. So I am going to use the planes for these two side panels. the planes in flight. So I've got three pieces of patterned paper and one piece of white, which are all the same size. I'm just gonna stick these down and then I'll tell you what the size is. So this is for the front and then for the back, you always need somewhere to write. There's no point in having a card and that you can't actually write anything on. So we've got a sentiment panel there. So these pieces are five and three quarter inches by one and three quarter inches. And like I said, you've you've got three panels in total. So th uh, three patterned paper panels and one white. Okay. Then I've gone for the clouds for the rest of this sort of center panel because I want it to look like my plane's flying. So the largest center panel, you just have one of those. That is three and a quarter by one and three quarters. So that's that panel. Ooh. Then you've got two little panels either side. They're three quarters of an inch wide by three and a quarter. And again, obviously this paper is directional. You don't want upside down clouds. So just take a moment just to double check as you're sticking it down. Because upside down clouds would look a bit strange. Okay. So that's those piece. And then you've got four panels here. 
And these are one inch by one and three quarter inches. So you need four of them. And again, just make sure um, that you are putting them the right way up. One more to go. Okay, so there we go. So that's the, the basic decoration. So now I want want something for a um my my decoration, my center decoration. And what I've done is I've used these two circle dies and I've cut one out in uh, basic white and one out in the cloud paper. And then that will just sit there. So it'll kind of, it'll carry on the, the cloud theme, but but lift it. So that's going to layer like that. And then I'm going to get my stamps. Um, basic white. That's Knight of Navy ink. And so to stamp the largest plane, and I have already die cut it. <laughs> and I've also stamped and die cut the sentiment. Now this is actually a little banner that's designed to hang off the back of the um the back of the plane. But I'm actually just going to uh cut the end into a flag end on the other side and uh use it as a like a little banner. So let me just that there we go. So that will decorate, that will just sit there at the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is just color this plane in to give it a bit more tone like these planes here. So I'm just going to grab some grid paper. Something like that. And I've got a blender pen. Now these are water-based pens that have a, a, a solution in them that basically enables you to colour. And, and blend and move the ink. So I've got Knight of Navy and Copper Clay, and I've opened it up and squashed the ink pad so that I've got color in the lid. So I'm gonna do the same with this one. This is Smoky Slate. And I'm going to use the pen and just do a bit of colouring. So this is a, a great way of adding um, colour or, or working with colour. If you're not really sure which colours to go with, pick the colours from the paper and use these as a sort of inspiration um, to actually colour colour in. So we've got the smoky slate here excuse me <laughs> i'm so sorry it's hay fever season here in the uk at the moment um right so i'm using the the smoky slate because that's what it's got on the wings 
And then the body of the plane is this copper clay. And then there are a few little elements of the navy. So that's what I'm kind of going to, to do to kind of pull it, pull it together. Now, because I have used Knight of Navy to stamp, um, the blender pen is actually going to pull up some of that color. Let me show you. So can you see where I've got extra darker lines? It's actually pulled it through and it just softens out the color. I really like it. It's a really nice kind of tone. So let's just pull this through. So this is the copper clay. And as usual, when I'm <laughs> when I'm colouring in, I can't actually talk because I'm concentrating. It's really hard to <laughs> concentrate and colour and talk. So there we go. So that's just a really softly coloured plain. There's not a huge amount of colour there. And I haven't worried too much about the exact colors and, and where they have sort of started and finished and it sort of gives it a bit more of a watercolor wash type effect and believe it or not that is actually the card finished all i've got to do is stick this last bit on i love it when you have a really cool fun fun card that actually looks as though you've spent hours on it and you really haven't so i'm just using tombow to stick this down and i'm just i've just put glue down the center panel so that it only sticks there obviously what we don't want it to do is to stick to the side pieces because if it does that it's not going to close i want to use dimensionals on the back of the plane actually let me just check yeah so the whole plane will um sit on on the circle so i don't have to worry about where my dimensionals are if a bit of it was kind of hanging off again for the same reason you don't want it to uh stick to the card base um pop another one there and just grab a little skinny strip for that. Oop. Everything's sticking to my fingers now. And then I've got to find my sentiment, which I've probably just scooted across the table. There we go. Let me just blow that cut. Just want to make sure that the cuts are similar in in depth. You don't want it to look. You want it to look like it's been cut with the same the same piece and then we'll get some of the teeny dimensionals i love them because you don't have to then cut your dimensionals into tiny pieces and <laughs> and then get your scissors all gummed up okay 
And so there we've got the happy birthday. Let's just make sure that's central and level. Let's move everything out of the way and show you the completed card. So let's just kind of fold it flat to begin with so you can you can see. So this is how it goes in the envelope. You can kind of fold those pieces that way or that way. It doesn't, doesn't matter. And then when the recipient gets it, they will just open it out and it will, will stand like so. You've got the panels on the back and the lovely image there and obviously this plane then kind of coordinates with this one and let me just bring in Sue's as well <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me today all of the products that you have seen are available in my online store if you pop over to www.inspiringinkin.com you will be able to see my online store and more details there will be a link at the bottom of this video to the correct blog post that this card is actually shown on and that will have all the measurements just in case you didn't manage to catch them as i was as i was saying them thank you so much for joining me take care i'll see you again soon goodbye